สวัสดีค่ะขอต้อนรับเข้าสู่การอบรมครูภาษาอังกฤษของมูลนิธิการศึกษาทางไกลผ่านดาวเทียมร่วมกับสถานทูตสหรัฐอเมริกาประจำประเทศไทยบริษัททีโอทีจำกัดมหาชนและ School for International Training Vermont ประเทศสหรัฐอเมริกาสำหรับวันนี้นะคะเป็นการอบรมในชุดที่ชื่อว่า Learning to Read Reading to Learn Reading as a Tool for Lifelong Learning ซึ่งจะมีทั้งหมด10ตอนด้วยกันผู้บรรยายนะครับวิทยากรรับเชิญของเราคือ professor m a r t i Anderson จาก School for International Training Vermont ประเทศสหรัฐอเมริกาด้วยความร่วมมือของสถานทูตสหรัฐโดยคุณจอห์นสแกโกสำหรับวันนี้เป็นตอนที่1น,นะคะ May I introduce uh, professor m a r t i Anderson she has kindly accepted to uh, To be our trainer today, under the topic "Learning to Read, Reading to Learn, Reading as a Tool for Lifelong Learning," and this is a teacher training video conference video program, distance learning video program, uh, co-organized by the Distance Learning Foundation, the American Embassy in Bangkok, TOT Public Limited. And School for International Training, Vermont, and it is a 10 session series. And today is the first session. May I introduce Professor Margie Anderson? Thank you. Okay. It's very much indeed. Whoopsie, sorry, too close to the mics. Good morning. It's great to see everybody. I'm happy to see some faces I remember from last time. Um, a couple, not last year, but the year before, I did the session on critical thinking. Who came to that session on critical thinking in Bangkok? Show me your hand if you were here. Okay, how about in Hua Hin? Which one of you were in uh, that session from Hua Hin? Can you show me your hand over in Hua Hin? I don't see it. Anyway. I'm happy to be back, and it's a delightful opportunity to look at the skill of reading. I think that the Distance Learning Foundation, with the help of the Ministry of Education, selected this topic because of how important it is for uh, the students in Thailand and everywhere in the world to be able to read in English. It's, of course, important that they can read in Thai, Literacy is one of the great skills of, um, for our students. To be able to read gives them access to so much information, keeps them from being stuck in old thinking, helps them to learn and grow. The same thing with learning to read in English. It's a very important task for our students. Um, and so I think it's very auspicious that uh, this Distance Learning Foundation picked this topic but you know there's two parts to this, to the heading. Re learning to read, reading to learn, and then the second part is reading as a tool for lifelong learning. And this is the idea that if people learn to read, and if they learn to read in English, not only does that help them with schooling and education, but it helps them for their whole life to be able to read the newspaper, books, internet, there are so many materials available. So our students don't stop learning when they leave school. They can learn forever. And so that's part of why we want to really encourage our students to become excellent readers of English. And ourselves too. I know when I read in a language that is not my mother tongue, I have to work at it. It's uh, reading is a muscle. You have to read and read and read. And the more you read, the more you're able to understand. Ka Jan Mati ko dai bok wa nei hua kho ni na ka learning to read, reading to learn, reading as a tool for lifelong learning na ka ko pen hua kho thi samkhan ma thi deo lao ko trong kap kwam tong kan na ka ryu wa nai yo bai na ka kong kha sung suksa thi ka nei khanat ni thi cha song seom kan an นะคะแล้วก็ส่งเสริมการเรียนรู้ตลอดชีวิตนะคะเพราะว่าอาจารย์ก็บอกว่าถ้าเรารู้รู้จักวิธีการอ่านนะคะได้พัฒนาทักษะการอ่านเราก็จะได้ใช้เ
ทักษะการอ่านนั้นนะคะไม่เฉพาะสําหรับนักเรียนก็ไม่เฉพาะสําหรับการเรียนเท่านั้นเองนะคะแต่ว่ายังติดตัวไปจนตลอดชีวิตนะคะในชีวิตการทํางานหรือว่าในชีวิตประจําวันทั่วๆไปนะคะก็สามารถที่จะใช้ทักษะการอ่านนั้นได้ตลอดไปซึ่งมีประโยชน์มากค่ะโอเค thank you so you have in front of you a packet of handouts and I'll try to talk you through them as we go along the first thing you're going to do both here in Bangkok and our friends in Hua Hin is you're going to have to stand up and move around maybe you were on a long trip to get here so maybe you've been sitting too long in the car or bus so we're going to start by standing up and if you could give me the next slide please Whoever is doing the slideshow, can you give me the next slide? While they're finding the slide, you also have the thing called handout number one. It looks like this. It says, "Who reads it?" There we go. You can go to the next slide again. So you're going to find who reads it, and your topic is there's a number of things here. Different kinds of reading skills. Your job is to stand up and talk to many people. Don't just talk to one person. Talk to maybe 10 or 15 people. See if you can put a name by each one of these, and you're going to move kind of quickly. So, for example, the first one says, "Find uh, who reads the newspaper every day." This can be in English or Thai. Either one doesn't matter. Some are very specific. Has read something in English on a T-shirt. If it doesn't say English, it can be English or Thai. It's just to find out about people's reading habits. Okay? So stand up. You have about five minutes to talk to many people. Same thing in Hua Hin. Stand up and talk to your friends. ค่ะอาจารย์มาตี้ก็ให้ทํากิจกรรมนะคะ find someone who นะคะก็ลองเอ่อก็ลุกเดี๋ยวขอสไลด์ต่อไปเลยนะคะ
Okay, maybe you can sit down now. <laughs> They're having a good time. I think we can sit down now. It's, just, it's, just, it's on. Okay, maybe everybody can sit down now. Can everybody sit down, please? Can you find your seats, please? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. <laughs> Please come and sit down. ค่ะขอสไลด์ต่อไปเลยค่ะค่ะแล้วก็อีกสไลด์หนึ่งเลยค่ะdown please thank you I'm really a <laughs> it's great to hear all the enthusiasm in the room as we're talking about reading uh, and fun to see everybody moving around and I see that some of you are meeting people for the new first time uh, new colleagues that you didn't know before today so that's also wonderful let me just ask, uh, somebody just came and said, ah, I got them all filled in. How many found somebody for everyone? <laughs> somebody just said that they did. You did, yeah. We have at least one person who got them all filled in. That's fantastic. Um, th let me just ask you, are, were you, was there one question that was very difficult to find somebody who did it? Which one was that, please? Ah. So Ajahn says, someone who read all the Harry Potter books, that was a difficult one to find. Okay, is there another one that was maybe difficult to find? Well, there are seven Harry Potter books, right? Uh, English Forum Magazine was one. You can, you can turn on the microphone when you're going to speak so that we can hear you. Okay, so this is, this is, the, this is the magazine that comes from um, U.S. State Department um, English language office, with which Mr. John Skako is our officer here in Bangkok. So it's a magazine available through the U.S. Embassy. Uh, very interesting, lots of good articles for teachers. So it was difficult to find people who'd maybe had a chance to see that magazine. Is there another one that was difficult to find? Yeah. Ten novels. Just too difficult. How about in Hua Hin? What was a difficult question for you? Hua Hua Hin, mi kham tham nai mai ka thi ha khon thi tob. ได้ยากอ่ะค่ะคืออย่างที่กรุงเทพนี่ก็มีอันที่บอกว่าดูอ่านแฮร์รี่พอตเตอร์ครบทุกเล่มเนี่ยนะคะอันนี้ก็หาย
going to the library once a month. We don't make it, we don't make it to the library. Too difficult. So part of the reason is to, it's interesting to find out who does what. Did you find a lot of people who said um, um, reads the news online? Was it easy to find someone who said that? Yes. So many people use the internet for news. How about um, how about regularly reads an English newspaper? Easy? Not so easy. Okay. Yeah, if I can if I can ask when you're speaking to turn on the microphone so that your voice gets projected. Thank you. Yeah, so it's not so easy to read the, the newspaper in English. Okay. So we get a sense of who does what. Now we're going to work individually. And this will be we'll just take maybe less than five minutes individually. You're going to look for handout number two that says on it, how do you feel about reading? So for this, you're going to work by yourself just a few minutes to fill this out. And there's a number of questions and you can put just a tick mark. For example, the first one says, reading in Thai is fun. And you can say, you can tick yes or no. And then there's the option of sometimes. Sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's not fun. Maybe depends, okay? Okay, depends on what it is. Okay, so take just four or five minutes by yourself to fill this out. Okay, go ahead, Nora. Okay, go ahead, hand out, pen T2, okay? Jan, long on, long top, do, okay? Yes, sometimes, do or no? Cause light, pen top, by doing, okay? บนสไลด์นี้ก็เป็นคําถามนะคะที่อยู่ในแฮนด์เอาท์นะคะเหมือนกันนะคะว่ารู้สึกยังไงกับคําถามพวกนี้นะคะแล้วก็จับให้ต
Okay. Now we're assessing your own personal thoughts and feelings about reading. And then we'll discuss why we're doing that in just a minute. We're just going to take a little vote. And I'll be looking. I can see Ha Hin right here to my left. So please vote there and I'll look at you too. I want the yes answers for all the questions. We're just going to put your hand up just so we can see. We can see how many say yes. Well, because aren't we? We're trying to say yes to reading. We're trying to say reading's a good thing, right? So we're going to check yes, and then we'll come back to some of the sometimes questions. Okay. So reading in Thai is fun. Who says yes? Ah. <laughs> okay. How about it is easier to read about sports than science? Okay. We'll come back to sometimes. It's a good idea to have students read aloud in class. Yes. We have another sometimes on that one. Okay. I should look up many words while reading in English. Ah, we don't have any. We have a yes. Uh, there's another yes in Hua Hin. I see you. Okay, good. <laughs> um, reading in English is fun. Ah, hallelujah. <laughs> Okay, some yeses for that one. If I read fast, it is hard to understand the meaning. Uh, that's more of a sometimes, not necessarily. Okay, who said reading in English is boring? Be brave. No. Ah. <laughs> okay, so there's not too many yeses, but I think sometimes, yeah. Sometimes our students feel that it's boring. Reading in English is difficult. Who said yes? Okay. Well, let's come back to some of these sometimes. When you said um, reading, uh, it's easier to read about sports than science sometimes. Explain, somebody here in Bangkok, explain why that's a sometimes. Let me know if you want to talk, please. We need to, you to have a microphone. Tell us why that one is sometimes. Uh, for me, there you go. For me, reading sport is more difficult than uh, science sometimes because I don't like uh, sport. So okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so she says sometimes reading sports is more difficult than science because she doesn't really like sports. So this is a very important point. Reading about things that we're not interested in. I'm with you. I don't know the name of any of the sports guys. You know. So when I read a sports article. I don't understand. Okay, thank you. You wanted to comment on that? Okay. Ajahn got a question. Why do you have some people who ask that it's easier to read about sports than to read about science or science? But one of the questions is sometimes. And one of the questions is that in fact, I don't like sports. So I feel like I feel like เอ่ออ่านสปอร์ตยากกว่าด้วยซ้ําใช่มั้ยคะอาจารย์ยากกว่าอ่านเรื่องเกี่ยวกับสายเสียบวิทยาศาสตร์ค่ะอันนี้อ
Um, sometimes. Who said sometimes to that one? About reading fast. Yeah, please. I think that's because um, sometimes I don't know the meaning of the words. So if if I if I read too fast, uh, I cannot I cannot understand the meaning. So I have to to read again and again <laughs> to to catch the meaning. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes if there's too much difficult vocabulary, reading fast means you don't understand anything, and you have to go back again and again. Right. Other times, maybe you can read something very quickly if it's a more simple text and there's less new vocabulary. Yeah, so that's a good example of that one. I think these microphones are not working right. While we're getting them to those to work, let me say a couple more things about the sometimes. I think what we learned from um, doing this exercise is that reading very much depends on the situation and the topic. It really makes a difference what the subject of the reading is for readers. So if you look at reading in English is boring, uh, nobody would admit but I think sometimes, yes, there are readings that are not very interesting. There are readings, and if they aren't interesting to the individual, if it's not something that you want to know more about, it can be very boring. So one of the things we really have to think about with our students is finding reading that they will feel interested in and that they want to do. And that will encourage them to keep going with their reading. So now I believe because we're waiting on the mics, let's just keep going. Um, and we'll have, uh, Nara Porn will do an update of all this in a minute. Okay. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so what I was just saying was about the importance of the, um, of the subject matter in terms of determining if it's yes or no or sometimes that sometimes it really depends for the learner or the reader whether they're interested in the subject and whether it's something that they want to read about and know more about. ง่ายหรือว่ายากนะคะก็อย่างที่ท่านอาจารย์ได้ตอบเมื่อกี้ก็เหมือนกันนะคะว่าถ้าเราสนใจเราก็จะคิดว่าเออเรื่องนี้เ
exactly. You could use this with your students to get them thinking about themselves as readers. That's exactly right. And I think I'm, I'm happy that you made that comment because everything that we do in this session on reading, everything is potentially something you could do with your students, maybe adjusted somewhat. So make notes to yourself as we go along. Is this something I could do with my students, depending on how old they are? Or could I change it somewhat? So yes, that's exactly right. That's, that's one reason. But there's another reason. So I'll let uh, Ajahn Naraporn talk about this reason, and then we'll look for another one. Think about what's another reason why we do this. ที่ให้ทํากิจกรรมในลักษณะนี้เนี่ยค่ะตอนเริ่มต้นก็เพื่อที่จะให้เอ่อผู้เรียนนะคะได้เอ่อคิดถึงนึกถึงตัวเองใน
just taking it in for now, okay? After the next activity, we're going to start with Hua Hin. So you might, as you're doing the activity, prepare uh, for somebody to be the first one to share, okay? The next activity we're going to do is on the, this handout called handout number three. And the topic is summary of reading activities, uh, reading questionnaire. I'm going to ask you to do this handout with a partner or the people at your table. So either find someone sitting next to you or if you're three at a table, that's fine. What you have here is a number of questions. The first one is about being a good reader. What does a good reader do? There's not one answer. You might circle all of them. That's fine. You're discussing. And then there's reading in Thai compared with reading in English. And then there's four questions about English reading habits. So I'd like you to take maybe about eight or ten minutes, work with a partner. I'm going to be coming around to listen in Bangkok. When the, the time is up, we're going to go to Hua Hin first to have some summary from this. And then we'll come back here and see what you think. So these are about things that people do when they read. Habits of readers. Okay? So go ahead and discuss with your partners at your tables. ค่ะต่อไปก็เป็นแพนเอลแผ่นที่ 3 นะคะซึ่งเป็นเอ่อเรดดิ้งควอชชั่นแนร์นะคะเอ่ออาจารย์กรุณาทําอ่านหนังสือที่เป็นภาษาไทยนะคะก็มีอยู่ค่ะค่ะค่ะขอสไลด์แผ่นต่อไปเลยนะคะขอสไลด์เรดดิ้งเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ
ต่อไปขอสไลด์ที่3เลยค่ะ reading questionnaire ที่3ค่ะอันนี้ก็เป็นคำถาม4คำถามนะคะเกี่ยวกับการอ่านที่เป็นภาษาอังกฤษนะคะอ่านสื่อที่เป็นภาษาอังกฤษแล้วขอสไลด์แผ่นที่4เลยค่ะค่ะอันนี้ก็เป็น reading habits นะคะก็ตอบว่า rarely นะคะไม่ค่อยจะนะคะทำตามนั้นหรือว่า sometimes บางครั้งหรือว่า often บ่อยบ่อย always เสมอเสมอนะคะ habits ทั้ง4อย่างที่ถามนะคะอ่านช้าหรือว่าอ่านแล้วแปลเป็นไทยนะคะหรือว่าเ,เปิดดิกดูความหมายของคำศัพท์นะคะหรือว่าอ่านออกเสียงนะคะอันนี้เฉพาะอ่านภาษาอังกฤษนะคะทำตามนั้นหรือเปล่านะคะทำบ่อยไหมนะคะไม่ค่อยจะบางครั้งหรือว่าบ่อยๆหรือว่าอย่างสม่ำเสมอ
going to uh, begin to talk a little bit about this worksheet. And as I promised, we're going to start with our friends in uh, Hua Hin. So what I would like to hear from Hua Hin is really your commentary on the first question. The first one says reading, and it says, what do you think a good reader does? And then we've got some options. A good reader reads fast, understands all the words, makes guesses, reads carefully, and what else do they do? So um, can I hear from Hua Hin, what do you think about these items? Which ones of them do good readers do, in your opinion? Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah. I think a good reader should be all on the show, A, B, C, D, read fast, understand all the words. Mix guess or will read carefully. I think the good reader should be it. And another thing, I think uh, the, read, the reader should be read from the advertisement too. And everything write in English. Another press show the English can, can read it. So, so your, your feeling is that a good reader needs to do all of these things and also be looking for all kinds of texts. So that's a really important point that she makes that it's not just um, things in a book, but we have advertisements, we have other kinds of things that the reader can read. And if they draw from all of them, that's good. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, in Bangkok. Do you feel also that a good reader needs to do all of these things or did you make some more important than others for you? Would somebody please share what you discussed at your table? We need a brave person. ค่ะอาจารย์ที่หัวหินก็บอกว่า a good reader นะคะต้องทําทั้งหมดนั้นนะคะคืออ่านอย่างเร็วเข้าใจทุกคํานะคะเรารู้จักกันเดาแล้วก็อ่านอย่างระมัดระวังแล้วก็อ่านได้ทุกอย่างที่เป็นภาษาอังกฤษแล้วก็อาจารย์มาร์ติก็เลยถามว่าอาจ
um, about, about understanding the words. You also talk, though, here about implied meaning. And we will talk a little bit more about this as we go through the sessions. There is a surface meaning, and then there are deeper meanings. And sometimes, in order to understand those deeper meanings, we have to understand certain words. So sometimes the vocabulary can be very important to understand what's really being said, especially in more sophisticated texts. So thank you for that. understands all the words ไม่จําเป็นเพราะว่าเราอาจจะอ่านเทคสต์ได้โดยที่ไม่จําเป็นต้องเข้าใจทุกๆคําเราก็เข้าใจความหมายของของเนื้อหาของเมนไอเดีย
หาคําตอบแล้วคําตอบนะั้นเป็นคําตอบที่ถูกต้องเพียงคําตอบเดียวเสมอไปนั่นนะ่ะมันก็ไม่น่าไม่ท้าทายไม่น่าสนใจเลยนะคะการอ่านนี้ต้องให้เรารู้จักที่จะค้นคว้าค้นหานะคะคําตอบไปได้เรื่อยๆโดยการคาดเดาค่ะไม่จําเป็นที่จะต้องรู้ทุกคําหมายทุกความหมายตลอดไปค่ะ All right, so let's look at. So I guess from the first question, what we learn is that good readers do a lot of different things. And and if you think about all of these things, plus at one table we talked about um, as a number for E, we talked about adding texts that students are interested in themselves. That we ask students to bring in things that they want to read. That's what this table was talking about. So there are lots of things that we can do. To encourage our students to be more interested in reading and to read more. Now we go back a little bit to some personal things. The next two questions talk about reading in Thai and reading in English. And again, we look at the personal because we are the ones who are creating these cultures of reading for our students. So it's important that we look at our own habits. So here we're comparing reading in Thai. Reading in English, and the one I would love to hear from, and we'll hear first from Bangkok, and then you can get ready in Hua Hin for your own responses, is to compare how much reading you do in English versus how much reading you do in Thai, and what you read in English versus what you read in Thai. So again, I'm going to be asking for some brave people to to tell us honestly. What? How much do you read in English versus Thai? So you have to be very brave. You're not going to get any ba bad points. You know, it's okay. We just want to hear your own experience. So who's willing to tell us about their own reading in Thai and English? Please. Would you tell us? No. ค่ะอาจารย์อยากจะให้หาฟลันเทียนะคะที่จะมาเล่าให้ฟังว่าเปรียบเทียบว่าเราอ่านภาษาอังกฤษกับอ่านอะไรที่เป็นภาษาไทยเนี่ยเปรียบเทียบกันว่ามากน้อยกว่ากันแค่ไหนนะคะค่ะโอเค please thank you in reading uh, we will read the newspaper about the politics In Thailand, in Thai, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but in but in English, in for me, I always read uh, novels uh -huh. because I think it's a good way to let me don't forget English. Uh -huh. And uh, just like you said that, and now we can find many things from the internet. Mm -hmm. So we we will read about the. Uh, Many things about the questionnaire, about the mm -hmm. everything from the internet. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, okay. So a lot of reading in English comes from internet, finding information maybe. And you said about reading novels, but you tend to keep up with the stories from Thailand by reading Thai newspaper. Yeah, yeah. I have a very important question. And I'm going to be looking at Hua Hin too, and coming over to you. So we're going to everybody's going to raise their hand. This is going to be an important question. If you have a choice in the evening between taking up a book in English, a novel, or switching on the television, who reads the book in English? Okay, and who turns on the television? <laughs> yes, yes. This is this is, um, and I do want to hear any comments from Hua Hin in just a minute. But I have to tell you something very interesting. We know that one of the things, in fact, John and I were just discussing this on our way over in the car, that one of the things that has really gotten in the way of reading all over the world, really. Are things like television. Now there are many good, interesting programs on television, like this one. <laughs> this is a fabulous program on television, but it replaces for many people reading. Um, and so one thing that is happening in um, U.S. 
public schools, so small children through high school, is schools or districts or even states, regions, will have turn off the television week where they make an agreement, the whole school agrees that all the families for one week are going to keep the television switched off. And read or even talk to each other, <laughs> you know. But yes, but they'll encourage then during that time to see how many books the children can read or whatever. So this is an interesting idea you might think about. Go ahead. Okay. เอ่อท่านอาจารย์ก็อาจารย์มาร์ตี้นะคะก็ได้ถามว่าเมื่อกี้ตอนแรกก็ถามว่าอ่านภาษาไทยภาษาอังกฤษนะคะเปรียบเ
ค่ะเ,เราก็อภิปรายกันในตรงที่ว่าอาจารย์มาตี้นะคะถามว่ามีใครบ้างนะคะที่อ่านแล้วแปลเป็นไทยในหัวก่อนนะคะแล้วก็ถึงจะเข้าใจรู้สึกว่าเข้าใจในเท็กซ์ภาษาอังกฤษนั้นนะคะก็มีอาจารย์ท่านหนึ่งบอกว่าได้ทําเช่นนั้นนี่ก็ก็เลยถามว่าเอ๊ะเราจะทําให้อ่านช้าลงไหมอาจารย์บอกว่าไม่นะคะ So she says it doesn't slow her reading, yes. but perhaps I think, perhaps I don't know, perhaps uh, her translation has gone without her notice, yeah. and it's kind of you know her habit. Yeah, yeah. This is interesting. It's a little bit what what when something becomes automatic. This is what uh, Ajahn Narayan is pointing out that possibly your translation has become automatic. Just happens quickly, so that it doesn't slow you down. For some of our students, though. If they are really trying to translate every word and every sentence, it might make it very difficult for them to finish the passage. Yeah. Okay. We have just a few minutes before um, this first session is finished. So if I could have the next slide, please. ค่ะขอสไลด์ต่อไปเลยค่ะ And you have it in your handout. We talk about the stages in learning. Reading, and I'd like to focus a little bit on that first one as our final activity before we uh, before we conclude this first session. The first one before we can get to anything, we talk about recognition, discernment, comprehension, critical thinking. Recognition is just being able to see what is there. And then discernment means to separate them into parts and make and understand what's happening with the text. Comprehension, of course, is understanding. And then, as this group over here was talking about, then we get to the place of thinking critically about it, asking questions, having opinions. So we're going to do just a little demonstration on recognition, and I'm going to be the guinea pig. You understand what guinea pig means? Guinea pig is the person or thing that gets tested. The guinea pig is—it's um, like in a scientific experiment. The guinea pig is the subject, and we're going to do something and see how what happens to the guinea pig. So for this little activity, I'm going to be the guinea pig. ค่ะ guinea pig ภาษาไทยว่าอะไรนะคะอาจารย์หนูทดลองค่ะค่ะ Okay. So I need a volunteer, and this is Okay. So I need a volunteer, and this is going to be a very easy thing for you to do, but you're going to have to come up here with me. The thing I'm going to ask you to do is to write something very simple, like one word or a simple phrase, easy in Thai, on the board. Okay. And then you're going, and then you're going to try to explain to me how to understand what that is, because I don't read Thai at all. Not a bit. So I'm going to ask a volunteer, please, to come and write something very easy for me. That I, then, then you're going to show me what it means. So can I have a volunteer, please? ค่ะขออาสาสมัครท่านหนึ่งนะคะออกมาเขียนที่กระดานนะคะเขียนคําหรือว่าข้อความสั้นๆภาษาไทยแล้วก็อธิบายให้อาจารย์มาตี้ฟังว่าข้อความนั้นคืออะไรค่ะค่ะเชิญเลยค่ะ How about how about you? Will you write something for me? <laughs> oh, maybe Charlie works better. Try to do one. Wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. Tell me. Tell me what this says in Thai. Uh, if you have a good chance, you have to do it quickly. Don't make it something like. Okay. Can, can you say? Can you say it in Thai language? Uh, okay. Uh, you need karaoke or? No, no, no. It's okay. So the first word is what? A water. The first word is nam. Okay, 
And where does Nam begin? And what's? How do I know what part of this says Nam? อาจารย์ขีดเส้นใต้คําว่าน้ําค่ะก็ถามว่าคําว่าน้ําขึ้นและจบตรงไหนขึ้นและจบตรงไหนคําว่าน้ําอาจารย์ขีดเส้นใต้คําว่าน้ําค่ะ What's the beginning of Nam? Okay, so those, so these two make nam. Yeah. And is this the sound n? The sound n. Mm? Yeah, yeah. And is that the sound n? Mm? Mm. Yeah. So, uh. and and what is this? <laughs> uh, the tone of the word. Ah. Nam. Nam. Ah. High, oh, high so so is this also high tone? This yeah, one? Yeah. Ah. Not, not uh, uh, lower than this. Nam. Ah. Kun. Kun. Yeah. Nam. Nam. Uh, lower. Nam. Kun. 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 Aha. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Sir. We did. Okay. We only got a little ways in the lesson, but thank you to Ajarn. Okay. Just to point out, it's going to take me a long time. To learn to read this very simple phrase, and she gave me some clues. So now I know that I'm looking for this. I've got this letter, the symbol that I know. And can I ask you, is this symbol always n? Always. Okay. So it, now I know. So is. Th- oh, that's that's different, right? Oh, but is this one the same? Okay. So now I have done my first step of recognition. Now I know that this is n, and when I see it again, I say, "Aha! I know that one." And I thought for a minute that maybe this one was also n, but then I see no. It's got a different. It's different. It's not the same. So same thing with your students, who have the special challenge of doing the opposite thing from me. When your students see The three letters. The first thing they have to do is recognize each one individually. And we find as teachers sometimes we write we write too fast, you know, or we write in different ways. And suddenly this also looks like this, also looks like this. Even different fonts in the in the books are different. So our first. Skill when we're teaching students to read is to begin to ha- encourage them to recognize the individual shapes of the letters, and they have to learn to recognize them when they look different, when they're written by hand, or when they're written uh, by different fonts in the book. So when we talk about the stages of reading, the very first one obviously is this recognition stage, and once we recognize, so to begin to recognize if If Ajarn had had more time with me, I could begin to see what are the different words in this sentence. How are they divided? And that would give me clues then to go to another text. Then maybe she can produce another piece of writing for me to look at, and I can look again for the n sound and the and the tone of how it's pronounced, etc. So now, by way of winding up. I would like you just to briefly chat with your partner, just for two minutes, and then what I'd like to hear from you, and this is for the next slide, please, is some success stories, some things you already do in your classes that you think are good for reading. ค่ะขอสไลด์ต่อไปเลยนะคะค่ะอาจารย์ก็ยกตัวอย่างนะคะที่ที่เชิญอาจารย์นิรมนออกมานะคะเขียนข้อความภาษาไทยและอาจารย์ก็พยายามเรียนรู้นะคะซึ่งอันนี้ก็คือตัวอย่างในขั้น recognition นะคะคืออาจารย์ก็บอกว่าการที่เราจะเรียนรู้ภาษาใหม่นี้เราก็ต้องเริ่มด้วยการรู้จักก่อนรู้จักภาษานั่นก่อนนะคะอย่างอาจารย์ก็พอจะเห็นว่าคําว่านอนหนูเนี่ยตัวนอนหนูเนี่ยนะคะในคําว่าน้ำเนี่ยนะคะก็ออกเสียงยังไงแล้วก็ไปเห็นอีกทีหนึ่งอยู่ท้ายคําว่าขึ้นนะคะอย่างนี้เป็นต้นอาจารย์ก็บอกเทียบกับคําเวลาเราสอนคําง่ายๆให้กับ
นักเรียนของเราในชั้นเริ่มๆนะคะชั้นประถมหนึ่งหรืออะไรอย่างเงี้ยนะคะก็เขาก็ต้องเริ่มด้วยการรู้จักที่จะเรียนรู้ตัวอักษรแต่ละตัวก่อนแล้วก็ประกอบกันขึ้นมาเป็นคํานะคะนี่ถึงสไลด์สุดท้ายเนี่ยอาจารย์ก็บอกว่าอ,อ,อยากให้อาจารย์คุยกันนะคะกับคนที่นั่งข้างๆนะคะแล้วก็บอกว่าในการสอนการอ่านเนี่ยอะไรที่ทําให้การสอนการอ่านของอาจารย์เนี่ยได้ผลนะคะค่ะเทคนิคไหนวิธีไหนนะคะอาจารย์ลองคุยกันนิดนึงแล้วก็เดี๋ยวลองเล่าให้อาจารย์มาตี้ฟังค่ะ And I think we'll start with Hua Hin after the we we'll just take two minutes to brainstorm with your partners and we'll begin with Hua Hin and finish here ค่ะขอสักสองนาทีนะคะอาจารย์ช่วยกัน brainstorm สั้นๆนะคะแล้วก็เริ่มที่หัวหินนะคะอาจารย์สรดาค่ะอีกสองนาทีค่ะ Classrooms that you think is helping your students to read, and then we'll take a couple of comments from Bangkok before we conclude. ค่ะทางหัวหินค่ะเทคนิคที่ใช้ได้ผลในการสอนการอ่านค่ะค่ะ Since we have two, okay, let's start study. Okay. For me, why I teach reading, I give uh, my students a chance to read whatever material they like. Uh, for example. About the uh, film, about the music, about the uh, movie star Bibi o g a r f i Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's this is a very important point, and I think maybe if we don't take anything else away from this beginning session, it's the idea that it is so important that students be able to read what they're interested in. So that's a that's a very excellent point. Okay. What are some other comments from just a couple more comments from Bangkok before we break? What else do you do that works? Maybe somebody who hasn't said anything yet. <laughs> somebody. We all have to be brave at some point. Yes. Okay. Who's going to be brave? Yes, please. <laughs> uh, okay. For me, I think that the first thing t- that the teacher should do is. Uh, try to build the habit of reading first. Uh, like for each week or each hour for uh, English lesson, uh, I try to ask my student to find something that they uh, would love to read, get from home, from internet, from media, from uh, magazine reading, or something that they would like to, and then take just a short passage or. Uh, just a few minutes to tell to his or her class. Maybe not everyone in one in one day, but maybe a few students in each uh, period. Mm-hmm. And then, okay, take take more time. Maybe one month or two weeks or something like that. Uh, try to get all the students brainstorm that what topics that uh, they would like to to learn more more or deeply in that topic. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. and then try to let them like uh, to do project work in uh, another card or more that the teacher try to create and let them do other activities yeah. like a uh, full skill. Mm-hmm. Okay, just mm-hmm. that. Thank, Thank you. you. So there's a number of comments embedded in this one, including again the. Um, idea of students picking what they want to read, but also I like your idea about incorporating some reading into every class. That it become, even if it's just a a little bit, maybe some classes it's a big part, other classes it's a smaller part, and linking it to the other skills, which we will also get at. Perhaps one more comment from Bangkok. Somebody else who wants to be brave and share something that works for them. Okay, go ahead. Uh, For uh, for my opinion and my partner, we think when we teach in the class, we should use the picture to demonstrate with the story. Aha. It, yeah, it's, it's amazing for students and interesting, so students want to learn about it and they can uh, understand quickly. Yes, okay. Yes, thank you. I'll just say this, I'll just reiterate this comment and that let our Nara Porn explain for everybody. She talked about the use of pictures and the importance that a picture can make in illustrating and making the meaning easier for the students. Ajahn Marti, can I have one comment? 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 โดยที่เอ่ออินคอร์ปอเรทคือคือคือเสริมนะคะเรื่องการอ่านเข้าไปในทุกๆคลาสเลยนะคะอาจจะอย่างเช่นที่เอ่ออาจารย์พูดนะ